Welcome back everyone. Uh, hello. Welcome back to the live stream. Um, we're, we're just kicking off here and uh, we've had a bit of a slight uh, mishap with Wooler. I'm um, sorry. Wooler. I call him Matt Wooler. Matt Wooler. Sorry, the volume's up on my other phone. I hope that wasn't too uh, too crazy for you all. Um, Nick Huzek, Whiskey Gaucho. Good to see you both. Thanks for joining in on the stream. Um, I'm joined tonight with special guest Matt Wooler when he finally decides to join me. There he is. Okay, there he is. Good. Um, who's I've going to be talking a few... got the beards. <laughs> I brought myself down to your level. Okay. <laughs> yes, Budgie Smuggler by Nomad. I wonder why he picked that one. And... Oh, great Luna, beard. Pacific Ale. Yeah, Nomad. So we've got a Nomad, and we've got a Nomad. Oh, cool, they're both Nomad. Budgie Smuggler and Luau. Look at this. Ooh. Yes. What do you reckon we start with? Um, I'm going to go to the Luau, I reckon. Paper bag of you go the well. I'll pour a bit of this on. Done. Uh, for those wondering that we're not using wine glasses this time, we're using Grolsch beer glasses. Too many complaints. Too many complaints from the viewing audience. Oh my goodness. Monarch Perth, Whiskey Saurus, mm. Benoit Jasmine, Lockie. Mm. Uh, paper bag episode. It is a little <laughs> bit like that. Uh, cheers. Cheers. Monkey ears. Colour cleanser. Mm. After the oh, it's been a bit of a warm day in Sydney, so a, a bit of a bit of a nail to start us off is a really good idea. Oh, mm. yeah, I know that one. I haven't tried this before. Mm. That's um, that's that's a cool name, that budgie smuggler. Mm -hmm. I'll show that up to the camera so you can see that. Um, I should have wore my uh, Borat mankini tonight. That would have worked. <laughs> it would have worked on getting me uh, my channel banned pretty quickly as well. I think <laughs> uh, I would have taken one look at that, and um, uh, there we go. Oh. Uh, Renest, Renestji, Renestij. Sorry, I always get that wrong. Sorry, Renestij. Please no, please no to Borat Mankini is the is the uh, is the response to that. You had a please no. <laughs> That's a pretty avid response. I can do it. Um, I can. I'm going to start start both of us on dram of one one two dot four nine blackberries, bubblegum, and bougainvillea. That, I've actually talked about this one before, and this is my own personal bottle of something I bought for, from the Christmas outturn as um, something to enjoy. Just, just a small dram of that as a taste, because it's uh this Christmas outturn. Yeah, well, the one that was just last month, the November outturn. For those wondering, we are not having a um, December outturn. November, December was in fact a double issue for those who remember. So it was a big format one, lots going on in there, and uh, Matt Wooler here from Dram Nation even got even got in it twice, I think. Look at this. Look at this. There you are. I think I took three quarters of the photos. So. Yeah. <laughs> if you flip to page thirty-two, you can catch him. They're not three quarters of yours. They're some of them. Some of them. Are yours. There, there you are. <laughs> oh. Uh, mm. That has like. Monarch Perth says, "If you're wearing a tartan mankini, please yes." <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is terrible news. <laughs> well, this is um. This is like warm wheat bix. Mm, that's a good tasting note. I'm gonna pop that there so everyone can see it. I hope you can see that. This is um one one two. Well, four the, nine. Blackberries, the... bubblegum, and bougainvillea. For those who are not familiar mm. with the society, and I hosted an event last night where it was mostly non-members. Um, the code is there to there's there's two reasons behind that code, and I'll explain what it is just as really quickly. The first number indicates the distillery code. So this is distillery one one two. And dot four nine is the 49th cask to ever pass the UK tasting panel, the expert tasting panel for, to be approved as a member's bottling. What do you think of that? Mm. Well, it's oily and juicy. It's got a really interesting finish. I haven't actually tasted it yet, but the, the, the nose on it for me is like, the blackberries I really get. I get like actually like fresh blackberries on the nose. Fresh blackberries. Like a punnet of blackberries on the nose in that one. Mm. Dram and draw, good to see mm. you, Jeremy. You can leave your hat on. Uh, Sally joined. Sally, um, sorry, yeah, he's, um, Whiskey Gadget says you can leave your hat on. I will. You, I think it's a reference to leave your hat on the song. <laughs> who, who was it? Was that Shania Twain or something? Or, I don't know. I don't know who actually did that song, but it's you can leave your hat on. Hmm. Sally, I just you need to quickly... Uh, <laughs> just a moment. Yes. The gift. Here we go. Look at this. Um, look at this. Um, it's actually, I really do appreciate it because actually I, I was using this earlier today. I like, it's just a really nice comb. Okay. And for my, for my, uh, for my locks, for my, my dark, my dark locks, it, it works just perfectly. Look at that. Look at that beautiful pouch that comes in. Thank you very much, Sally. 
that is the um, that is the nose that is given off that really uh, cereal uh, nose that is given off from that New Zealand twenty one year old New Zealand uh, New Zealand whiskey company. Who the hell is that again? What's the company? New Zealand one that did all the <sighs> did New all Zealand the whiskey co, like New Zealand whiskey company. No, right? did all the yeah Dunedin. Yeah, but yeah, okay. That is the nose of that twenty one year old. I still got a bottle of that at home unopened. That was like super bargain, but that nose, that cereal, custody cereal, that's where I'm finding it from. Very cool. That is very cool. It was Joe Cocker, wasn't it? Sorry, it's Joe Cocker. You can leave your head on. Okay. I should have known that. I'm actually, I am a fan of Joe Cocker. I think he was fantastic. May he rest in peace. Smoked a lot of scoobs too. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> a lot oh, of scoobs. Yes, yes, he did. Uh, anyway... Um, I'm going to answer for the first question. I'm going to get uh, Matt Willis' input on this as well. I had a, a question from member Calte who asked, what is an STR? In today's mid-month release, we released 66.145 RoboCal and, and 94.5 Vineyard Mudguard. The Vineyard Mudguard was the, was the fifth ever cast from Distillery 94 for the Society, which is rather cool. So it's a very early code and, a, and a very cool to see Distillery 94 back in play. Um, but it says on the thing that it's from, it says on the, the label, the label that it's from a first fill STR. So STR stands for Shave Toast Rechar in that order. Shaved. Shaved Toast Rechar. <laughs> and the, <laughs> we're on the world live, we're on live. What are you doing to me? And so I want to talk a bit about, I want to talk about what that is. So it was actually, a, it's actually a, t- trip, a type of cast treatment pioneered by the late Dr. Jim Swan, who, and I've made myself some notes here so I don't forget anyone who was heavily involved with Cotswolds, Milk and Honey, a distillery in um, Israel, Pendaren in Wales, Abbey, uh, Lindor's Abbey, Amrut, Kilhoman, but most notably Cavalan. So he was uh, he was very involved in that in these distilleries, consulting with them. This guy knew whiskey better than anyone on earth, I would say. He knew whiskey down to a uh, molecular level about how to improve it, how it matured, and especially in cask management and wood management. No one was better than him on it. Uh, and he had particular amount of work with Kilhoman and Cavalan in developing STR. So it was a way of actually, um, it was a way of, uh, there you go. In his words, it was, the STR was designed to optimize every stage of the process for being ready at a young age. So it was a way of actually optimizing the maturation of whiskey to perform better at a younger age. So instead of filling to refill bourbon casks and refill sherry casks and waiting 20 years, most Cavalan, as a good example, is quite young. It's most most of the casks out of Cavalan are between four and six mm. years old. Uh, and he once famously said, he I, I don't think he was meant to, but he did once say that the ex bourbon barrels, thanks to SDR treatment, at Cavalan were ready. I mean, mature and ready in eighteen months. So not even whiskey in most countries. They had obviously matured it a lot longer than eighteen months, but they were ready to go as a nice young and sprightly whiskey at eighteen mm. years. Eighteen months, sorry. Malt spirit. Malt spirit, yes. Malt spirit drink thing. Um, <laughs> so he was um, he was actually he was actually kind of the founder of what is now known as the Scotch Whiskey Research Institute, SWRI. And a cool little link in there is that Dr. Andy Forrester from SWRI, who has previously come from SWRI as a senior scientist there, is now head of whiskey education with the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, SMWS. So we, we are, um, we're going to see a lot of changes coming through in the next few months and over through to next year as well in terms of changes to um, the society's learning structure and how we um, how we approach things thanks to Andy but have you have you had an experience with SDRs that you sort of want to remark on or, or sort uh, of or... not that not that I've necessarily like gone out and um, and look for but uh, certainly through these distilleries that have been mentioned mm. uh, it's always been that curiosity of of the intensity of flavor that that a lot of these uh, Distilleries existing in really dry or really humid environments that are aging out in like two or three years, mm. uh, and you're querying how the hell they're getting to the where they are um, without burning out the casks like they do, mm. uh, like you see in so many Australian distilleries sort of happen. Uh, and uh, it, I don't know. I guess it's got to come down to this technique itself, but um, certainly uh, it it delivers that. I guess that that level of balance of not just full flavor, but actually getting that oak characteristic mm. appearing. Because mm. uh, a lot of those young whiskies, it's it's all flavor, 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 and no real sort of wood element uh, tends to appear. 
And then if it does, it tends to be quite burnt out or quite quite intense, mm. too intense uh, for that. But you know, it's yeah, for my my point, I've never actually gone out and physically look for it. Uh, but uh, clearly his influence has been pretty strong. I mean, mm. I, only, I only met him once or twice and he's, he was a very humble sort of individual and someone that I guess you would almost classify as someone's, uh, someone's dad. That's mm. the way he came across. Mm. You, you really didn't think, you know... Just he was quite an insider. He was quite an insider, not, yeah. not, an, not an outsider. Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. Big yeah. flock of white hair and mm. he just sort of would... Even at like things like when he would appear at Whiskey Live or, or uh, uh, Whiskey... Um, Whiskey show, not whiskey live, but at whiskey show, uh, when the guys would get him out for that, was that he was always reserved in the background. He would just mm. say, and if someone wanted to talk to him, he would talk. Otherwise, yeah, he, he came across as a very, very um, reserved individual. Mm, mm. Yet knew so much. Yeah, I never had much. I never really had much to do with him. As in, like, I, I haven't ever met him once as well. And that was thanks to I think whiskey show as well. Mm. Yep. And I, I, you know, I spoke to him at at no greater detail than I did anyone else. Yeah, sort of like it. But I, I wish I'd got to know him. Um, because he was he, his influence in whiskey was cannot be understated, and um, so that's that's a long version of saying what an STR is. It's a shave, uh, so they it's a it's a shave of the inner staves of the cask. It's a toast, and then it's a rechar. So instead of just charring the cask in between each each of its maturation cycles, it's a full sort of reactivation of the wood each time, and that meant that the wood was almost acting like a first fill every time. It was it was really active cask. Um, rather than relying on the charcoal or the, or the of the cask to, to provide that influence or the just the length of time influence mm, anyway, mm. and um, so that's an SDR. What what are we up to now? Uh, what did we pick? Well, we started Peter, the, the yeah. we, we said Peter, but we were also going to look at something retrospect. So I think we probably should do retrospect before we hit Peter. So this one, mm-hmm. yeah, I think so. All right, uh, ninety three point one five. So the fifteenth uh, cask ever out of Distillery ninety three, which October is October oh four. Thirteen mm. year old, uh, one hang on, sixty three point three percent, uh aged in oak. There really wasn't that much information on here, was there? There wasn't. It's 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 aged now. What's the name of the cask? Uh, Fresh wood ash. I didn't even know where to look. All yeah, right, there, yes. there you go, little, yeah. little name. That's the name line. was less important then. It's yep. it was this one was called Fresh Wood Ash. To see what I'm talking about. Yeah, I think that, that'll that'll hold oh, up. Is that in there? We'll find Hopefully out in a second. You can see it. There Wait we go. Okay, that'll be enough. It's pretty close. Yeah, we're pretty all close. Right. We're pretty yeah, close. Yeah, yeah, not a lot of information on one of these labels. Yeah, uh, it's all about the paper, mm. and then um, a very very big logo. Yeah, yeah, very big. Very big. All right, here we go. Old Earth. A little taste. Man, I can see the oiliness. Of that yeah. spirit coming out of the coming you see out it of the split bottle. In the color. You see a lot of the um, that you know. It's almost like that that element of adding oil on water, and you just see that 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 color split that occurs. Um, so this bottle got a bit of a hammering that... at the Archie Rose pop up bar earlier. Like uh, I think that was uh, October, um, and it wasn't even that long ago. But oh. so that's when we opened it. Typical sweetness, Glen Scotia. <sighs> for me anyway always get that lolly water effect I think it's a little bit less so on this one though it's like I find the modern ones quite quite sweet and oily but like this one's like much more just much more savoury than I was expecting 63.3% though this is no um, this is no sort of uh, small dram and how long has this been open for? a month at month. most yep. yeah okay Good to know how long these things sort of open for because they really do so well not tell to it, decay, what, what's, but what's 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 that mean to you? I'd love to know. Uh, whiskies that have just been open tend to display certain um, tips and tails aspects, mm. things that 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 dissipate over time. Mm. Uh, that freshness. Now, even with a lot of these whiskies, you think, well, the cask isn't exactly air sealed to begin with. They then decant it, so it still hits air before it ever actually gets to gets to the bottle then once it's sort of decanted and it's done its thing and the flocking or whatever has gone on mm. not in this case because they're not watering it down but still they get decanted and then they end up going into the bottle is that i i, I know it's still at its, its freshest state i guess it's as freshest as you're going to get before the actual uh, coming out of the cask itself so um i don't know a lot of whiskies i always find a lot of whiskies tend to decay over time you know even over a couple of months 
Uh, Ardbeg's a really good example. You open yourself a bottle of Ardbeg 10, you get really interesting light coffee notes, those things that Ardbeg used to be known for, uh, that decay really quickly in a couple of weeks. You just don't, you get all those aspects of what Ardbeg would be. Would you say the peat drops off a cliff a yeah, bit? Yeah, things, things like that, definitely. Um, it, and just, I don't know, yeah, it gets mm. to it. It's really nice to know how long these things have been open for. Uh, scary when you've got people that will say, oh, you know, I've got a, got a hundred bottles of whiskey open on my open on my shelf. And it's like, how long have those freaking bottles been open for? Because it can get a little bit scary. I mean, some, yeah, the, I mean, and sometimes it can be open for a long time and, and... And still be fresh and bright. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I, I personally find that a lot of like, uh, like rich sherry whiskeys, rich fortified kind of whiskeys, like port casks, like sherry casks and so, and so, um, even musket barrels and things like that. Mm-hmm. They actually really appreciate after being open for like even six to 12 weeks. And they like actually like they, they that sharpness that you often get at the beginning of a sherry whiskey. Like mm-hmm. you first crack one open and you pour it and it's like almost a bit sharp. Yep. And like the, the fruits are like, it's like the stone fruits right and like the juiced stone fruit right at the front. But they actually, they dis- that dissipates and becomes like much more sort of rounded and like a, like a polished stone almost later yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, and some whiskies appreciate better after a couple of months of being open, something that's copped a bit of air and, mm. and, and given what it needs to do. But mm. I don't know whether this is to my palate at all. I don't think I'm going to add water to that. Mm. Uh, I, I didn't add water to the last round either, but that's already at 55% or so. This is at 63.3. It's got a little bit of ham to my nose. I don't tend to tend to react very well to that. Oh. It's like hammy beer. You know, there's a problem. Ham beer. When, when beer's got a bit of a smell of ham about it, you're in trouble. I'm going to get to the next question whilst we're enjoying that dram. Sally asks, Hi Matt, how does the influence in a spirit style... Sorry, what influence in a spirit style does a master distiller have, especially with the big players, like the big distilleries? Does a changing master distiller change the style completely or do they just take over their predecessor and maybe introduce a limited edition range? So there's two things to consider here. The first of all is the role of the master distiller, his team, and what the end goal of that big distillery is. So when you say big distillery, you could be referring to say like a Linkwood, you could be referring to a, um, uh, a Glenfiddich, things like that that are big distilleries. And you have to remember that it's something, it's still something like 86% or something like that. Uh, and it's been dropping, but 86 or 85% of the total combined output of, of Scotch whiskey goes into blended whiskey. So the goal of those distilleries is to create a product that is consistent in style so that the blend doesn't change. And blends change over time. We've, we've experienced that, but it changes over a much longer period of time than some single malts changes, mm. we also know. Mm. I mean, we're comparing now something that was bottled in 04 that is completely different to how it is in 2019. But often you can taste blends from the 1960s and they are different from how they are now, but not radically so. So it's often a longer period of time that that change happens. But the, and you also got to remember that master distillers often stay in roles sometimes for 40, 50 years yep. in the same role because it's, it's quite a family run company. They love what they do as if you wouldn't love being the master blender. But you were remarking on something earlier when we were talking about this yep. about yep. Uh, Shivers Regal is a good example. Yeah. So um, uh, Collins, Colin Scott, 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 isn't it? Yes. Yeah, I think Colin so. Scott. Um, it's been a couple of years since he's been out. But uh, last time I was chatting to him, he's like, I asked him simple questions about how, how do you manage the, um, the, the profile of the shivers and blending and things like that apart from the fact that there's a bottle of shivers opened every second somewhere around the world so every a, second that and that that's not even the biggest producer of blended whiskey that's a lot of whiskey being uh, put together is that at that point he had said that there were seven blenders that he had below him working 24 7 putting together the whiskies and in fact they're putting it together so often so consistently that they didn't keep record of anything in the past they didn't need to so it's sort of like um, with these big brands especially how many people are actually working their blending together are you mistaking a master distiller for a master blender you know there's different terms you'll notice with with the the uh, national brand ambassadors that will come out that that would be classified other as uh, 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 master blender or master distiller uh dr bill mm. constantly is is noted as the master distiller but he's not necessarily the distiller at all but he's certainly yeah. overseeing what is going on with with 
with two major brands mm. in order for the control, but there are other people that have to happen. And for a lot of these brands, they are making 24-7. They don't stop. Mm. They really don't stop. They no. can't. Can't afford to. Which which kind of makes it sound like the role of the master blender in this case, or master mm. distiller, sorry, is, 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 uh, is fairly, it's not redundant, but it seems like they don't have much control in what they're doing, which is actually so far from the truth though, at the same time, because they, they, are, they, they are responsible. Whether they're responsible for maintaining a house style or changing it, can be quite an effort. I mean, I'm going to use I'm going to use um, uh, my good friends Graham and Fay. So Graham Cool from Glen Murray Distillery took over the reins at Glen Murray, um, and I, I'll have to I'll have to double check my numbers on this, but I think he took over the reins in like 2003 or 2004. It might even been earlier than that. And he only just left this year, so it's 15 years of craft of changing that spirit. And Glen Murray has significantly changed, and they supply mostly to blenders as well. That's why we have. The likes of Label Five and on the shelves is two or days. three owners in that period too. Yeah, two. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, two or three. Uh, yeah, two. Two definite owners in that period. Um, um Martin Nekes. I'm never going to say that company name correctly. And Bowie Hennessy before that. Um, so that was that was an interesting year for the distillery, and yet he was able to craft an interesting range of single malts out of that era. Mm. This is a this is a distillery that had a twelve year old. And a no, and not even a no age statement at the time. But when they, he took over, they had a twelve year old, and I think that was it. Plus Doctor Bill's influence. Yes, and of course Doctor Doctor Bill Lumsden from um, uh, who is the master biologist at, at <laughs> Glen Hard Hard. There you go. It's a good. No, I, I can't remember what his actual title is. It's in it's in the vaults menu. We wrote about it earlier this year, but I can't remember off the top of my head. His, he was responsible for Glen Murray for him was a sandbox yeah experimental a, distillery yeah it was an yep. experiment it was for him to trial what ended up happening at Glen Murray in many ways so but that was an interesting year of that distillery that was mm, fantastic true. and um, and Graham surely would have been involved in that in that part yeah. of the year as well yep. which is fantastic yep. as well but that's that's kind of like that's the interesting pot role of a master distiller is first of all identifying what the output needs are of that distillery and identifying where their spirit's going, does it need to change? Are they developing a single malt range? How much flexibility in market will they have with that range? Can they introduce things like peated versions, can they, which Glen Murray has? And can they introduce things like, um, you know, even cider cask finish, which they got in trouble for? So yes, there's all sorts of things that a master distiller can do and in, in influence in the process of um, being the master distiller, which is, it's quite, a, it's quite an active role. So yes, I would say that in some cases it's a distil- it's a role which doesn't require much uh, intervention, and it's maintaining a house style like Linkwood might be for I don't I don't even know who the master distiller is at Linkwood. I, they, they don't have a visitor center, they don't have much of a outside profile, but they they are designed for creating um, uh, a core component of Johnny Walker as an example. So I'd say the master distiller has less control over change because they're not building a brand that they have more control over maintain maintaining a house supply i hope that answers your question sally and that's an awesome question by the way <laughs> um i'm gonna grab some of these comments that are coming in whiskey gacho asks weird beer question messina released a gelato ale of dulce Le de leche de leche thoughts i haven't got any thoughts on that because i've not tasted it send us a six pack we'll let you know yeah yeah you, you uh send send me a case and we'll, we'll examine it <laughs> distillery consultant yeah there you go distillery <laughs> consultant <laughs> Uh, whiskey and drink is joined. Good to see you. Admo and Bladnock. Oh, Bladnock Whiskey Distillery joined. Mm. There you go. Um, they could add in on this. Easy. More like a CEO of a company then. Sally, yes or no? Yes or no? I mean, it depends again on the size of the, the company. Um, but yeah, they, they guide the spirit and they often have they help distillers working for them yep. in creating what the profiles yep. they're looking for. Yep. And in some cases, they have more flexibility than others. They're almost like the vice chancellor of, the, uh, of a university. That's yeah. a really good example. Yeah. They yeah. are like the vice they chancellor. They need of to make sure yeah. the shit is working right. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, there is trouble. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Huxhold, Jared, good to see you. Hope you're well, mate. Um, uh, hold on. Was that a was that a bottle kill? Yeah, it was. That's a, that's a that's a whiskey fair death. Yeah, okay, so. got it out. People got to see the bottle. Oh, sorry. There you go. God damn. If Scotty was in, he would know that we poured this at whiskey fair. And Scotty, um, show us your pens. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Whiskey for shellfish. Shell, 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 shellfish. People. Um, this is this has got a bit of, fair bit of color in it, more oh. than I remember it having. Um, so it's an eight year old from a second fill toasted hogshead from Distillery Fifty Three, Cask Two Two Nine Zero. Whiskey for shellfish people. There's been been quite a few pun bottlings out lately. Mm. Actually, I like that. Mm. <laughs> Even though I don't like puns, I like pun bottlings. 
big. Um, super interesting, interesting stuff. Thanks to the info, Calby Chan says. No props, Calby. Good to good to see you as well recently. It, this is this is um for me. This is uh, exactly what I want out of a fifty three. Mm. Very toasty. Toasty, clean, um, consistently good out of the fifty three. You know what? There's there's a sort of a, a nickname for this distillery for distillery fifty three in Isla. There's a nickname for them in Isla, which they call it Mister C, and that stands for Mister Consistent. It is the master of consistency. This distillery. It's the benchmark of the of um of consistency in malt production, and also the highest. The it's also the highest output distillery in Isla as well. What do you think of that? What's the proof on that? Actually, I haven't even checked. This sixty one point zero reminds me of a um oysters uh Benedict oysters Benedict. It's oddly specific, but I like it. Baked, cooked. You know that toasty note. You know that toasty note you mentioned. I get it way more on the palate. I haven't even tasted it yet. That's the cool thing about these uh, Society Isla uh, bottlings is that um, most of the time you don't need to drink them. You do not. There is so much Someone flavor in the nose. It's insane. It uh, not puts Maybe. the distilleries to shame, but um, it certainly makes you go. Why the hell aren't they doing this? Why aren't they doing it? Well, but so, then, I mean, some of them do. Some of them have a car strength version. Yeah. yeah I mean, uh, this is well, more than car story. strength. This, well, this is more. Yeah. This is more than car strength. But um, it's good that they don't, because there will be no reason for us to actually be drinking these to begin with. Talking about yeah. society bottlings. Mm. Uh, so keep it up. Keep not doing it. It makes our life <laughs> far more it enjoyable. It means our supply of lovely 53s shall continue. No, this was this was really popular at fair, though. Very, very popular. Mm. In fact, I was throwing up between getting this and there was a couple of other bottles. And I don't believe I got a bottle of this in the end. Well, you, I think I subbed you went, it out you went for, for the 93 like, instead, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. The Drambles so, on, yeah. Drambles on lock, 93.99 was one of the really other popular ones that day. And, of course, 139.4, which was the members only pour. You know what? I know. I know we're in December, mm. so it's a bit early to say this. But two of the big things I'm looking forward to next year are whiskey fair, like whiskey fair 2020. Two and, of them. Well, no, no. It's only like, one whiskey fair. No, no, one whiskey fair. But the um, also champs. It's a champs year next oh, year. I've talked about this before. Champs, champs. So 2020 is a champs year. We've got some awesome. Where's, where's champs happening? happening? I can't answer that yet. <laughs> we're working on it. We're working on it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's in Sydney. Sorry, it's in Sydney. For those who've been oh. badgering me. I've had members badgering me about wanting champs wanting to move to Melbourne for a year. I have been lobbying for Melbourne. I have. I know he has, and he doesn't <laughs> even live in Melbourne, and he wants it to be in Melbourne. I get it, uh, but we're going. It is. It's. Uh, it, it will be in. Um. It will be in uh, Sydney again this year. I'm afraid. And there'll be random people winning again. Well, it was random every year. I oh, know exactly. Yeah, that's, yeah, the yeah, that's the crazy thing about thing, it. Yes. It is insane how just mental it gets. It's sort of like you have no chance of guaranteeing yourself a win. Not these days. Mm. No, the not, thing I love about champs, in my opinion, it's the perfect mix of skill and luck. It's actually a it's a mixture of both. You could you think you could be the most trained nose in single malt and you'll still get you'll still get zero out of eight correct. And yet the guy who won it in twenty sixteen had been a member for a month. Uh, sorry, Adrian, if you ever watched these, I could I could get that wrong, but it wasn't long. And you didn't know core and single malts, but you had a stab and one. And yet I'd say that the Brook, Brook who won in 2018, uh, is probably one of the most experienced noses in whiskey in Australia. So, um, and so hers is more probably a very much a skill-based win, but it's not, it's not one or the other. And it, it's a mixture of both. And, uh, and my, my tip that I always give people is stick with your first guess. Mm-hmm. And I see people do this. And That's they go, what I did. That's and, what I did and we this had an, time around. We had an Ardbeg 10 and a Lagavulin an 8 in, as the two peated options in the 8. And I saw people write them in the right sections. We've got, we've got the answer sheets to show it. And then cross them out. And then change them around. And so their score went from 4 to 2 suddenly. Anyway. Or from 2 to 0. Yeah. Well, when you pick those sulfur casts though, you put in one or two sulfurs... It screws everything up. Oh, it's amazing. It's that amazing. It's screws amazing. Screws everything up. Yeah. No, it's good fun, though. It's it, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to wear a fez, though. You've got to wear a fez? Well, you don't have to wear a fez. No, you do. He's saying you have to wear a fez. You don't have to wear a fez. 
but you should wear a fez. Yeah, you and should. And if I like you wink should. at the camera and, make and, a, and like do like a sort of make a, it a, a thing. secret sort of thing, make a fez a thing. Yeah, yeah. No, like yeah. you should wear a fez. It's it's a fashion. It's an icon. It's an icon. hashtag society fez. Can we get some green ones? Yeah, we can get some green People fez. People are buying. Yeah, yeah. Nice yeah we get fezes at the bar. Done. Five dollar fez that? at the bar. You hear that? Five dollars. You hear that? Five dollar fez at the bar. Done. You're hearing me now, right? Green fez. Green fez at the bar. And yes. <laughs> and <laughs> maybe we'll include it with the ticket. Maybe like you order a ticket, oh and your goodness. ticket arrives in the mail with a fez. The opportunities here are endless. <laughs> I'm tired just thinking about it. Champs is quite tiring. Yeah, I'll be honest, it's tiring. Not for me. I just no, not for you. But I'm for, for us organising it. Turn up and compete. And you're going to compete. 2020. You're in. Yeah. You're in. Cool. Compete. Yeah. Guaranteed not to win. Uh, you never know. Hey, I hey, know, hey, exactly. Hold on. I know. Hold on a second. <laughs> this guy took out third place. So he came third out of 150 people last year. Totally random. Totally random. Yeah, first guess. First guess. And which included a $750 voucher to the Oak Barrel. Shout out to Scotty. Well, yeah, I got some good rum out of that, actually. I got you some bought, very good rum. You bought some rum out of your, <laughs> your whiskey voucher to the Oak Barrel. <laughs> No, there's some lovely rums, of course, yeah. Mm. As we know, mm. we do rum as well. Oh, here you go, rum. Rum! Okay, well look, that's all we really wanted to go over tonight. A bit mm. of a chat, a bit of a cleansing ale, a bit of a bit of few whiskeys, and um, talk, uh, this, you know what, I'm going to hold on to the rest of that. Long gone, three. isn't it? No more bottles. But this one? Yeah. Oh, long gone. Yeah. No, this was, yeah. this was hugely popular. How many came into Australia? 36, somewhere around there. Not a huge number, but like enough. Like a, a decent chunk of the cask, and like we... That was like a combination of whiskey fair and it getting one out turn. That's the thing about turning up the whiskey fair as well. Mm. And this year it was a massive um, society. We had the whole stage. Yes, the society setup. stage. That and, was great. That was yeah. great. And uh, we um, there was a lot of things that you could buy on the night that weren't available yet. So things like this sold pretty quickly. Yeah, it did. We took quite a few yep. orders each each day, which was great. So of course, if you want to, um, yeah, if you want, to, we'll be we'll be back at the stage this year. In fact, if I'm to quote Scotty, and I'll hold him to this, and I, and he said, uh, the society can have Any the stage time. as long as as for every year that we want to do this <laughs> fair, we're on stage. And I'm really excited to be back on stage because the society's been a part of the whiskey fabric of Australia for mm. 16 years now, and you know it's it's uh, and being part of that fair for us is really important. It means a lot to us being there. And actually supporting the Oak Barrel and supporting everyone who wants to discover more about whiskey and learn about it in a fair format. Because anyway, it gets, what, 220, 230 people per session. Mm. Three sessions. You know, it's like 800 more people, through yep. the, 860 yep. people through the doors learning about whiskey, which is fantastic. And, um, we, you know, we just, we ran around everywhere. I was mentally and physically exhausted after that. I've, I've even suggested, he probably doesn't remember, but it's like, let's do card carrying members as well so yeah right you know there were taste there were special tastings for members and a lot of people turn up and said they were a member it's very hard to tell when someone's a member or not that's the best thing about traveling all over the world with society you can go anywhere and say you're a member and yeah. they will they're, they're very accommodating yeah but maybe we need to do card carrying special dram yeah so, i mean just flash your card get it they will have something you know what we it. might even open something like a vault release at fair next year yeah and you show your card, you get it, you get a paw kind of thing. Ec- yeah, it, 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 something, ec- something, something like something like that. Don't quote me on that. Not um, a photo on your phone. Not a photo on your phone. No, it's no, no be not the a real photo thing. of your card. No, your actual <laughs> card. They used to scan the society card at um, Archie Rose. Yeah, right. When you, members came in, they'd scan the card so they could log which members were coming in. And I don't know if they yeah. still do that, but they used to. And I'm, anyway, probably not. Um, Sally says Fez with a bow tie. I didn't is, do that. Is I, that a, a, I had a tie. Maybe a green, have green a bow tie, tie like a yeah, dark green yeah, bow tie yeah, with fez, a fez. fez. I could do that. Um, uh, top three. Uh, fez and Green Society Mankini. I could do that. I'm going to find my fez, fez photo. No one believes. I don't think anyone believes the Fez. It's, it, no, people believe you. It's fine. Um, whiskey Yuzmo <laughs> joined. I keep saying Whiskey Yuzmo, but it's probably Juzmo. I'm just... I'm just a, I'm, I'm, Giz, Euro- Gizmo. I'm, I'm, Euro- I'm European that... I'm European that, <laughs> that, that... That J there. Um, Giz... Um, lapel, uh, members card or oh, lapel pin or members card. No, it would be a members card. Yeah. Um, um, lapel pin for sure. <laughs> lapel pin. Yeah. I mean, if you've got, if you've got a lapel pin, yeah. only members can access them. So yeah. yes. Okay. The yeah. older, the better. Yeah. Yeah. Vintage lapel yeah. pin. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> and what about SMWS poker chips? If you turn up with a oh, poker chip. Oh, that, that, <laughs> that's at least poker... $10 worth. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if you turn up with an SMWS poker chip, 
you get minus one dram. There's only one or two missing, so you're a dead, you're a dead person if we find you. <laughs> we'll find you. We'll find you. No, we didn't mind it. It's, it. I know some poker chips were missing between the steps tastings in Melbourne and Sydney last few days, but it meant you know members get to take something home as well. It's kind of a bit of fun, I guess. Um, you know what? Um, that's all for that's all from us tonight. Thank you, Matt Willer, again for joining. This is the third, fourth stream you've done with us. Fifth. Don't know. I think it's about fourth or fifth. It's a lot of streams. It's a it's a lot of streams. A lot of live streams on on Instagram. Um, <laughs> I didn't get one. He said, uh, Whiskey Gacho says that's Alejandro. He didn't get a poker chip. chip. Yeah, he didn't keep one. Refez. We well, well look, sure. Gacho. If you're if you're at champs in twenty twenty, which I hope you are, I'll hook you up with a fez. That one's on me. You yeah, heard it. Done. Green, you green heard fez? it. It's, it's I'll hope hook you up with the SMWS green fez. It's 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 happening. It's, it's happening it's now. On. Uh, I, I want slash need one. Yeah, I think you want one. You don't need one. Anyway, uh, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in, especially Calte and Sally for great questions. And uh, thanks, Matt, again for joining joining mm. me on this. Mm. Um, this is the fifth last live stream for the year. We're just taking a two week break over Christmas. Fifth last. Fifth last. Fifth last. How was there ever a fifth last? There's always a fifth last. But well, I mean, like this, we're going all the way till Sunday to this week, and then we're taking and then we're taking two weeks off, and then. You can catch up with the rest of this uh, on the um, on the stories, which is up here, or you can watch this later on YouTube, of course. But you don't get to ask the live questions on YouTube. But that's okay. You get to enjoy the content all the same. Mm. Um, and that's uh, and that's all all for us tonight. Uh, mm. Thanks again for tuning in. We really appreciate you tuning in, watching, being a part of the stream, having a chat with us about what's going on in whiskey and um, hashtag the two mats. Is the new phone camera giving us better quality? That's the question. I mean, I think it is. It looks pretty clear. It looks pretty clear on our screen here. Mm, I mean, mm, yeah, mm. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, by the way, tomorrow night, yes, is... Um, is uh, I've got Murray on the live stream tomorrow night. Ooh. Murray Hassan. It's a book stream. We're talking whiskey literature. Uh, he, better w- he better wear his uh, jacket. Uh, he's always wearing I a want jacket. A blazer. I want a blazer, Murray. I want a blazer. Maybe that striped one you had a couple of years ago. You know what? Steps. You know, I, had a, I actually made a joke with Murray that I have seen him once in a t-shirt. And that was because I made him wear a society t-shirt for Whiskey Fair. <laughs> <laughs> So he does. He, he can yes, wear a t-shirt. Yes, yes, it does exist. Yes. It does exist. Um, and uh, yeah, Muzz Reads. Tomorrow night is Muzz Reads. We're going to have a bit of a chat with Muzz tomorrow night. I'm really mm. looking forward to it. Mm. Um, and then, of course, uh, I'll, we'll, we'll announce what's coming on off after that. If you're not a member of the Facebook group yet, just search at Scotchport Whiskey Society Australia. Join the group. Uh, you can get all the sorts of updates that are coming out. There's a couple of bottles left of... Oh, well, actually, last time I checked, there's only two or three bottles left of the Mudyard Vineyard. Mudyard Vineyard? Yeah, I actually... No, Mudguard Vineyard, I'm I sorry. Del- yeah. I deleted the email today deliberately to stop tempting me to... <laughs> okay, okay. I clicked on it several times. There's like 15 left, 15 left. It's like I'm deleting this email because I keep checking because... Yeah, it was a... Yeah, it's a tasty cast. Gone. I don't have it in the office yeah. at the moment, so otherwise we would have tasted it tonight. But um, I'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you so much, as always, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Bye.